Hi, today we are going to talk about implementation challenges from HPC to containers in the academy and who we are. Uh, hello, I am Lukáš Hitmanek. I am from Masaryk University and Cisnet uh, from the Czech Republic. I am an IT architect of our infrastructure, which consists of both storage and uh, compute nodes. And uh, I am Victoria. I'm also from Masaryk University, where I work as an IT specialist, but essentially I take care about our Kubernetes infrastructure. So, Uh, our Czech National Research and Education Network uh, is called AINFRA-CZ and it operates a HPC environment. We have approximately 20,000 CPU cores, 200 GPUs and 60 petabytes of storage. And uh, the um, computational resources are accessible mostly uh, through batch system PBS Pro. And storage resources are accessible through Kerberized NFS version 4. Uh, storage can be also accessed by S3 or Ceph RBD, but uh, just a minority of users uh, choose this way. And we have about uh, 1000 active users. So in HPC, We have two types of resources, compute resources and storage resources. Uh, users interact with compute resources uh, via creating shell scripts and running them uh, in a batch system, PBS Pro. They have to have SSH experience because these batch systems do not provide any graphical user interface. Uh, we try to change this by implementing open on demand Um, that was our attempt to provide some graphical user interface. And secondly, storage storages are directly available on worker nodes. Uh, however, storage resources are spread among various Czech cities and uh, this creates confusion for users because they have to take care about compute and data affinity. On the other side, uh, these storages can be mounted to users' computers. HPC brings uh, some troubles. First of all, there is no straightforward way to monitor running computations, so users can't easily check the state of their jobs. Secondly, older scripts are not compatible with today's technology, Uh, I bet most of you know Python 2 versus Python 3 issues. Furthermore, every user ha must possess at least average Unix skills because uh, they have to interact with uh, batch systems that are run via command line. Another problem is caused by time-limited access to Kerberized storage. After certain time, users have to renew their access token. Last but not least, setting up a NFS client is a hard task for every user when he or she wants to access their data from uh, their own computer. So far, I have been talking only about HPC, but as we are at KubeCon, I will move to containers now. Uh, I think that majority of you have already heard about NGC containers or bio containers that are meant to be used in HPC. But how do we use them in HPC? Uh, in a shared infrastructure, Docker is mostly prohibited due to security issues. Uh, so we can use Singularity, but this tool has problems of its own. And also we have another option, that's Podman. But uh, if we think about it, why don't we use native container infrastructure? As an infrastructure manager, you can choose between building shared container infrastructure or letting users run their own container infrastructure. Building shared infrastructure has advantages mainly for users. They don't have to deploy and maintain Uh, the whole infrastructure 
which is in fact much more complicated than just being able to work with SSH and write some shell scripts. Uh, instead, they can focus on research and uh, their work. However, some infrastructure managers just provide users with right tools to run their own infrastructure, such as OpenStack Magnum. Here in Czech Republic, we decided to go with the former approach and uh, build distributed container infrastructure. We operate several Kubernetes clusters that uh, are built on uh, Rancher Kubernetes engine, second version, together with Rancher dashboard. Users can work with these clusters in multiple ways. They can either interact with native Kubernetes API or they can uh, work with pre-deployed containerized applications or frameworks or they can uh, work with uh, Rancher dashboard. To explain a bit more, in case users choose to interact with Kubernetes directly, they get their own or shared project, it depends on use case, together with the namespace. They can utilize various persistent storages such as NFS, Ceph or S3 and they can also utilize GPUs and InfiniBand. Uh, in case users do not want to interact with Kubernetes directly, they can take advantage of applications which we have pre-deployed, such as containerized Jupyter Hub and Binder, uh, instance of bioinformatics workflow to Galaxy. We also offer Kubeflow and 3D accelerated desktop that can be used by users to run GPU intensive applications such as ANSYS or MATLAB remotely. Furthermore, we also use various frameworks such as European GH4GH test and West standard, Nextflow or SnakeMake. Having all of this, what are the benefits for users? First of all, users don't have to be skilled in shell scripting and other nasty Unix peculiarities. They don't have to interact with Kerberos and configure NFS. They completely don't have to be aware of NRAN topology. They don't have to know about software modules and their dependencies because we provide them in pre-prepared containers. And overall, this is a direct way to run HPC containers easily. Every coin has two sides. And from the beginning, I have been talking just about one side, the brighter and better side. However, Lukash will now talk about the second side, which is much more darker. So let's look at the dark side of containers in HPC. When we think about containers in HPC, there arise some challenges that I briefly introduce here. The first challenge is Kubernetes and HPC integration. Why do we need it? Imagine you are running some kind of infrastructure and you just can't say users, OK, we are finished here and from tomorrow everything is different. It just can't happen. And also, if you don't have unlimited budget, you cannot just build new parallel infrastructure. So you need to make some kind of transition in place here. The second, users are familiar with queues and they also expect some fairness of the infrastructure, as queues are a natural thing in HPC. The third one, scheduling. If you have significantly more users than compute or storage resources, you need to schedule them somehow. And last but not least, we need to get users trust so they are willing to use the new container infrastructure. Okay, if we are talking about Kubernetes and HPC integration, what does it mean? It means how to integrate existing HPC infrastructure with um, Kubernetes. 
HPC infrastructure typically consists, is consisting from three parts. It's um, authentication and authorization infrastructure. Uh, it contains compute nodes and it contains storage. And if we want to integrate it, we have to deal with all these three parts. Well, authentication and authorization infrastructure can be shared between Kubernetes and HPC. This is because once you have some user database, you can naturally use it for both. Credentials can be used for both parts, so there is no problem here. Also, worker nodes are easily shared between Kubernetes and uh, PBS Pro because you can easily drain the node from containers or drain for PBS Pro jobs. And once the node is free, you can assign new type of uh, function on it. So you can switch between Kubernetes and uh, PBS Pro. And moreover, you can even run both types of workload at the same time if you utilize PBS Pro Kubernetes connection connector, but uh, we do not use it. On the other hand, storage. Storage is the real challenge and we will look uh, on it uh, in more detail. So, as I have told, HPC storage integration is a real big challenge. This is because HPC infrastructures usually are based on NFS or AFS file systems and th those file systems are meant for large data that the uh, user can store and then stage it to worker nodes and can do the computation on them. And you would need some, the same for Kubernetes. So how to access HPC storage from uh, Kubernetes? The short story is you can't. This is because you have to deal somehow with user authentication. The user authentication is usually done in two variants. You can use either access tokens or the whole authentication is based only on user IDs. Problem with access tokens is that those tokens do not understand namespaces. And as you may know, whole container world is based on namespaces. Also, there is minor problem. The access tokens are usually time limited and you need to solve somehow how to renew the token. The other option, UIDs, there is a problem that most containers run as user 1000 and uh, you can't distinguish between users only on user IDs because all the user users have user ID 1000. So you need to remap somehow user IDs between local user 1000 and some user ID that is on a remote site on, in HPC. So for storage, we tried or somehow utilized three kinds of uh, file systems. One is uh, the old and known NFS. Second is uh, SSHFS and the last one is a common internet file system which you can know from Windows world as Samba protocol. In the case of NFS, well, there is no UID remapping possible. On the other hand, it's fast and uh, there are many CSI drivers for NFS, but user ID remapping that is missing is a real problem. You can use NFS for uh, persistent volume claims for local storage that is uh, dedicated to Kubernetes, but you can't do integration with, H with HPC that uh, use variable user IDs for that is diff uh, for every user there is different user ID. For uh, in the case of uh, SSHFS. Uh, it can remap a user ID, but on the other hand, it's slow. And also there is a problem that uh, CSI driver must not restart, because if you restart CSI driver, all modes get broken and the user lost access to his or her data. In the case of common internet file system, it can actually do user ID remapping 
it has acceptable performance, at least in the latex versions, but unfortunately it's not widely supported in HPC world. So if you, came, if you come to uh, HPC administrator and you tell him that, or her that you want to utilize a common internet file system, the answer is no, you can't because we don't offer this file system. As I have told, queuing and fairness is another challenge. Queuing is currently not present in vanilla Kubernetes, but you can install some add-ons such as Armada that present some systems of jobs and queues, and this is really similar to HPC system. But do we need queuing system at all? Queuing system in HPC is usually used for distinguishing between different kind of worker nodes such as SMP nodes or just HD nodes. But for this functionality you can fully utilize the Kubernetes system of labels. And we believe that the labeling system can actually replace queuing system that is used in HPC. However, we also need fairness. We need that uh, some, uh, say, greedy user does not eat, eat uh, whole infrastructure, so every user can eventually do uh, computation. So we need uh, some kind of fair use policy and we need some mechanism that can force this fair use policy. And in, and, in this area, we are not aware on a solution yet, but we think that resource quotas and priorities can at least help in this area, and maybe this is all we need at all. Another challenge is uh, scheduling. PPS Pro contains complex uh, scheduler that is able to do complex math uh, computation of uh, where the particular job will run and when. On the other hand, Kubernetes contains a simple scheduler that uh, does not contain such a thing as uh, fairness and complex computation of order of pods. And also, PBS Pro scheduler can handle situations such as a big job eventually will run on any node, so the node is drained and the job is running eventually. This is something that a Kubernetes scheduler doesn't do. And we have problem that, and we also saw such problems that user submit a job that is greedy on the resources, for instance, uh, it needs uh, 60 CPU cores and Kubernetes does not drain any node to satisfy this requirement. It can be solved by pot eviction if you configure the infrastructure that pot uh, can be evicted from, from a node, but this approach is not good for HPC case, because imagine that pod uh, is running some computation, say for one month, and you definitely do not want to evict, in the, evict it uh, almost at the end of the month, because it means that the whole computation will run from the beginning. Also, almost all scheduling algorithms assume that jobs has a finite running time, but many Kubernetes resources such as the deployment or stateful set uh, does not comprise time limit, so it pot they potentially run in unlimited time. And this is not a bug, this is something that this kind of resource was designed for, it should run un uh, in unlimited time. But for, schedule, for scheduling, this kind of uh, pot is a real problem because they can't deal with such such situation. So this is still open question how to do scheduling in Kubernetes that would uh, somehow be similar to PBS Pro, but our goal is not to reinvent just new PBS Pro system that is fit to Kubernetes infrastructure. 
Last but not least challenge is how to gain user trust. Users currently use uh, HPC infrastructure, they have problem with it, and they, but they have at least something. It eventually work, but if you introduce them a whole new infrastructure, they are naturally afraid of changes. Will it work? Is it stable? And mainly, is it some hype or will it be stable infrastructure for next years? You have to convince them that yes, it will work, yes, it's stable, and yes, it will survive next year, and it will survive also many next years. We also need to build uh, better portals to make it easier for the users. Our future plans contain uh, continuing transition from PBX Pro to Kubernetes, and we also plan to build some experimental setup. Uh, we imagine that uh, worker nodes will be equipped with large SSDs, and we want to build fast shared storage from these SSDs uh, from the worker nodes. And the challenge is how to provide reasonable data redundancy. Most of the solution consists of uh, just replicating data, so you have uh, at least two or maybe three copies of data, but in such a case you effectively, effectively reduce the capacity to the half or even one third. And we want to find a way how to do this more effectively, for instance uh, utilizing some RAID 6 equivalent or RIG Solomon codes with better redundancy. And we need all this because we are pretty sure that uh, some of the worker nodes will be down for some amount of time for, say, repooks or they can have a hardware failure. And it's not acceptable in such case that whole storage is not, is can, cannot be used. So to conclude, we provide unified container infrastructure in Czech infrastructure. It's multi-tenancy, so many users can connect. It's uh, suitable for both web services and heavy HPC loads. And we are already running HPC loads. Uh, as uh, there was mentioned that we utilized Nextflow framework. Then, so from this framework, we already run tens of thousand jobs just to prove that our infrastructure is working. So it's, it's all from us and thank you for your attention.